What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Make It and Break It. My name's Andrew. Behind me is our Project Hyper Tenor A Yamaha R6 uh, Sport Bike to Adventure Bike build. And today we're going to continue on our mini DIY series uh, on this side of the bike. So last time we worked on getting rid of the uh, kickstand switch, uh, kickstand sensor, the thing. The thing that stops your bike from moving if your kickstand's down. Um, because we didn't want that to break when we're off-road and those are hard to fix on these types of bikes when they're off-road. Um, on this side of the bike though, we've made some major changes to the way the brake mounts. Uh, we need, and we need to do a couple things to make sure this bike is still nice enough to ride on the road because this will see a lot of road miles. So let's get in here and I'll show you what we're, what we're dealing with here. Okay, so you can see here our mock-up of our new foot controls. So these foot controls, this thing spins because I broke it. Um, our new foot controls here uh, are set up so that we get more leg room so we can put like actual armored stuff on and still stand up on this bike uh, as opposed to when your foot controls are back up here somewhere uh, you basically can't stand on this bike if you're as tall as I am or at least I couldn't maybe the flexible ones of you could um, so we relocated we relocated the foot controls and we actually found a place that mounts the brake master cylinder pretty well the problem is when we redid this we got rid of a couple useful items uh, and those useful items are a mount for this sensor which is our brake uh, rear brake light sensor right here uh, normally this attacks attaches to the brake pedal somewhere over here and when you press the brake down it pulls on it and that closes the circuit in here and that's what causes your brake lights on the back side to light up this is really bulky it works fine in the normal position where it's kind of sitting up here behind everything and it just pulls on it when you're uh, when you're braking but in this situation there's not really a good place for us to put this where it's gonna stay working and not get broken and not get in the way so we got to figure out a solution for this which we have one uh, and I'll show you that in a second our second problem is uh, one more of rideability not like actual street legalness uh, because of this new design we no longer have a spring a return spring to give us some pedal feel the return spring this is the old brake pedal so the return spring is mounted off of this thing here and it comes down to the bottom of your brake pedal and it pulls on it and makes sure that the brake uh, comes back up and it, you have some positive feel of your brake and you're not just relying on the pressure in the hydraulic system to uh, get your feels of the brake. But when you get rid of your stock rear sets, and this is a problem uh, for custom stuff like this, as well as racing rear sets, like uh, the Woodcraft set that's available for this bike, or pretty much any sport bike out there, a Woodcraft set or a similar racing rear set is available. Those oftentimes do not have a mount for a spring. I mean, truthfully, do you need one? No. Are you going to miss one on a sport bike on the track? Probably not. Would it be nice to have on the road? Yeah, it gives you a little bit more feel, and I would like more feel since we're going off-road where the rear brake is going to be very important going down hills and things like that. So, we do want to get a spring there, but as you can see, like, like this sensor, there's really not a whole lot of space to put a spring off of the brake lever. So what we're actually going to do is steal a page from you track guys and we're gonna put in a couple woodcraft uh, solutions for track riding that'll work just fine in this case for off-road riding the first one is this so this is a new brake light sensor this thing replaces the banjo bolt oh that's a this thing replaces the banjo bolt on the back side of your master cylinder here and it contains inside of it a little pressure switch. So instead of pulling on a little string to close a circuit, the pressure switch goes and closes the circuit and that's what causes your brake light to turn on. We'll run this up here and cut this wire off, put some ends on it uh, that'll, that'll match these so I don't have to mess with this at all and then plug it in and we should be good to go. Don't forget though, if you're messing with your brake system, you do want to bleed it before you ride. We're not going to bleed it today because I don't have a pedal setup that's um, firm enough to do so, uh, but you will. I will need to bleed it before I go ride. I'm gonna end up replacing all the fluid anyway, so that's not a big deal. This fluid has not been replaced in a while, so it's it's worth a change. 
The second thing we're going to deal with is this spring. So uh, oftentimes you're left with the same master cylinder when you upgrade your rear sets. So Woodcraft also produces little springs that go on your master cylinder. And this one is a spring that's sized for this master cylinder, hopefully. And it's got little perches and things. And so instead of having a spring connecting to your brake pedal like this, you have a spring that's between this hard mount and this uh, adjustable mount here. And what it'll do is provide the same sort of feel as a regular brake spring, but it takes up a whole lot less space. So we're going to install those for you today. Uh, this might be a small little DIY, and hopefully everyone finds it helpful. So we're going to start with the spring because it's real easy to get to. So first thing you do is you got to take off all of this stuff, your rear sets. And so um, sometimes you may not have to take off your rear sets. Uh, oftentimes you can get to the brake master cylinder on a stock uh, rear set. Brake master cylinder mounts right in these two holes. You can get to that without pulling off everything. But because of the way we have this set up, if you want to see that design, there's another video, I'll link to it here. Um, we actually have to pull this whole thing off to service our brake master cylinder. Luckily, nothing here is particularly hard mounted because this is all just plastic that uh, is here for uh, design purposes, not here for actual use. We'll get the metal parts here soon. Unfortunately, our foot pegs haven't come in yet, so I can't finalize my mount system, so I don't really want to send stuff off and then have to adapt my mount system later. It'll make a cleaner solution if we can fix it before we send off everything for manufacture. So, pull this off here, and then we'll take this one and remove these couple mounts. And it swings free. So now on the back side, we need to get our smaller hex bit here. Back side of this thing. These things are actually going to mount in like this. So this is actually how it'll mount once the final metal piece is, and these will be threaded. Uh, so the stock rear sets, I believe, are aluminum. These ones are going to be steel uh, because it allows for better threading. Um, you're not really as worried about uh, thread stripping. And also, and also steel is a lot more ductile uh, than aluminum. So while aluminum doesn't bend too much before it breaks, steel has a lot of bend in it before it before it'll actually break and fail on you. And off-road, you can deal with bent foot mounts and bent uh, foot controls, but what you can't deal with is broken foot controls, uh, or what you don't really want to deal with is broken foot controls. So in this case, we're actually going to uh, make everything so that if it falls and if it does uh, hit something hard to the point where it might fail, we're actually just going to let it bend instead of break. The Woodcraft spring set is just a spring perch and a spring that fits, over, fits into it. And this spring goes over this shaft right here on the brake master cylinder and actually mounts between, uh, I think between this spindle and this jam nut. So, uh, the first thing to do is remove this spindle. Um, this bike, however, has not had this spindle off in a long time, if ever. So we're going to put a little PB blaster on here and try and uh, loosen her up a bit as I spray all over my hand. Ugh. Alright, I grab some bigger wrenches, maybe this will work out better. There we go. And then this should just spin right off. So this would be normally how you would uh, adjust your brakes on a sport bike. Unlike the uh, clutch, which has a uh, has a, the clutch connection rod, the connecting rod you can spin and uh, it'll extend and uh, retract and move the, the pedal through its range of motion. This one, all you have is this little head and that lock nut. So you pull this off. And in this case, what we're gonna do is install the spring mount 
on the top side of this. So this, uh, this jam nut will act essentially as a preload mechanism for our spring. So you pull this off. but do keep it handy. Slide your spring up and over everything. You might have to work it around a little rubber boot here until it's sitting up nice and good against the body here. Take your spring perch. Make sure that the, make sure the protrusion or the indent is gonna capture, captivate the spring like that. And then you thread your lock nut back on. We can get this to go in the gloves. There we go. And you'll note that this thing moves pretty easy um, when you're reinstalling it. So then all you have to do is reinstall this spring perch back on here. Uh, do be careful with this first thread. Um, this first thread is going to be real awkward due to the design of most of these uh, main activation uh, plungers. So be very gentle when you're putting this on because uh, you don't want to cross thread this and then just like basically destroy your master cylinder. We have that and then we'll take our 12 millimeter and lock this down for now. See if we can't get our 10 mil in here to hold this nut in place. That's gonna be the trick. You gotta kind of force the springs away and then you can use your 12 mil here and lock it down against the fixture. And then there you go. So now you have deleted the spring that hangs out on your brake pedal that's gone and you now have your spring that sits on your master cylinder much more compact and it uh, still retains a lot of the same rideability of a stock spring return on your uh, on your motorcycle now before you go ride this you do want to adjust it make sure everything returns properly uh, we're not going to do that right now but uh, we will do that uh, after we bleed the brakes and get all the fluids going and everything else. All right, that's your spring done. So the next uh, item is our sensor. So this is the normal sensor and it actually runs from here up through here and we can actually all pull some of it out. It comes right up through here and then down into a connection underneath the gas tank. That's one of the reasons the gas tank is up. The other reason was we had to access it for the uh, sensor removal on the other side. And it runs into a connection somewhere down here. Now, the connection on the bike is not one of these style connections. It's one of the, uh, it's kind of like more of a standard uh, fitting style, um, not these uh, bullet fittings uh, that we see on this thing. So you are gonna have to do a little bit of work to put bullet fittings on. Luckily, it's pretty easy to get them. I went to uh, Home Depot today and picked up a set of these. These are bullet, bullet splices for uh, 22 to 16 gauge wire, which is probably what all of these are. It should be close enough, I think. And uh, really all you have to do is locate about where you want to cut the wire, which for us is right up about here. We'll go ahead and clear this thing out of the way. So now this sensor is out. Be careful when you're doing this. A lot of these older bikes have uh, sheaths that aren't perfectly, uh, they're not perfectly heat sealed to the wires. So you might have to go chasing a little bit of wire if you don't get a perfect uh, grasp on them early. Now, if you were a little bit smarter than me, you'd have given yourself some more space to work with in here. I wanted to keep the wiring a little bit clean because the wiring on the new sensor is actually long enough to get all the way to the original connector. So uh, I wanted to cut as close as possible to that original connector. That way there's not a bunch of spare wiring I have to try and zip tie up. But then you get in here, you strip the 
cover back a little bit and you're going to want to strip the wire. There's one. There's two. And it's just a matter of getting, uh, in this case, female. I do want to stress before you install something like this on your bike permanently, because these are going to get crimped on, you do want to test that they fit the connection that you're putting on there. I've already done this, but you do want to test the size of the connections work. They actually fit very tight. It was hard for me to get them off, but uh, I think that's a good sign. Helps to actually, you know, squeeze this when you're trying to install them. So you might be able to see by some of the carnage on the ground here, uh, we had to make a couple change of plans. Uh, the crimper tool I was using wasn't working very well with the end connections that I had bought, nor was it working well with the uh, butt connectors that I used on the headlights for the Project Ute. So uh, I ended up pulling out ye old Radio Shack soldering iron and uh, ham-fistedly soldering a bunch of these connections in. So these things are soldered, um, they have heat shrink over them, and then I wrapped ele electrical tape over that. And the idea here is that um, my soldering's not the best, but if you solder a lot, shrink wrap it, and put electrical tape, it's probably not gonna come apart. Back to the master cylinder here. Should probably get some sort of container. So on the back side here, there's a bolt. We're gonna pop this one off. Uh, actually, I just pulled the whole socket set out for this. Um, and then uh, replace this bolt with our sensor. Oh. Well, that's a bad sign. So I said that's a bad sign because we basically got no brake fluid out of our master cylinder. Um, what that means is we basically have no brake fluid in our rear brakes. I wonder how long that's been that way. Oh well. We'll fix that at some point here. So the Woodcraft uh, kit that comes for this comes with some spare crush washers. You do want to replace your crush washers. Theoretically you could reuse them if you needed to, but uh, if you have new ones just replace them. So it should be one each side. They gave us two sets. Put it through the banjo. Make sure you put it through correctly. This uh, your sensor should be facing back towards the bike in this configuration, but you want to replace the however you uh, can so that it looks correct. There's your second one. Check your alignment. Make sure that the banjo's over the uh, connection here. And then go ahead and start threading it back onto your master cylinder. Now, keep in mind, when you're assembling things, you do want to assemble everything as much as possible by hand. That'll stop you from cross-threading anything. You really shouldn't have to put torque on your bolts or on any fastener until you've hit metal to metal. If you do have to do that, something's wrong with your alignment. All right, that should be tight enough for now. We'll check for leaks when we bleed the system back down again. Now the moment of truth here will be if the brake light turns on. There's not a lot of fluid in the rear brake, but hopefully it'll turn on. So we're gonna go flip this thing on here. And let's see, can you see that? You can see that. So I have reassembled uh, partially the rear brake assembly here, uh, mostly just so this thing will move and uh, the plunger will move and not the whole, you know, rear set, plastic rear set. This thing was just flexing as opposed to the actual plunger moving. So if the plunger moves and we get enough pressure, we should get a brake light lighting up over here. And that's a success. So we have managed to reconfigure our brake system so it'll actually work much better with our new rear sets. So we have our new spring here which seems to be working just great we have really good feel and good good return even in this loose sort of configuration we have here uh, and our light rear brake light turns on so we have uh actually upgraded and overhauled our brake system a little bit a couple things we still need to do and you should do this um immediately after doing um any of these brake sensors installation stuff like that 
you do need to uh, bleed the brakes. But I'm not gonna ride this immediately. I still got a bunch of other work to go do around here and I do wanna do a full brake system flush front to back. So we're gonna go do that at a later time, but don't forget to do that when you're doing this sort of work. And I think that's it for us today. Thanks for watching everyone. My name's Andrew. This has been another Make It and Break It YouTube channel video. Uh, if you like the video, hit like, uh, comment down below if you have questions, uh, if you have different parts or want help searching for these sort of things, or if you like what we're doing in this channel. We've got my Hyper Tenere build behind me, we've got an RX-8 build out front, uh, do 3D printing obviously, uh, motorsports, cool builds like that. If any of that stuff sounds interesting, hit subscribe, ding that bell icon, and then you'll get notified when we put out a new video. So thanks for watching everyone, my name's Andrew. And I'll catch you later.